YouTube viewers and random Jumanji fans, there are just some prop replicas out there that I consider to be among my holy grails. The 11th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, the Men in Black Neuralizer, the Lightsaber, Star-Lord's Walkman, and of course, the Proton Pack. But so far there has been one prop replica that I've been struggling to add to my collection until now. The Jumanji board game. I was obsessed with this thing ever since I first saw the movie when I was a young kid. Heck, even as a teenager I gave it my best shot at trying to make little replicas of it myself. With varied results. Anyway, so, anyway, so that's all changed now that the Noble Collection have decided to release a brand new and affordable prop replica of the board game. And it looks awesome so far and highly accurate. So how exactly does it hold up? Well, let's take a closer look. Taking a look at the packaging, it's very large, but doesn't offer much on the front. We get the Jumanji logo across the top and an image of the board game in its closed mode, with imaging of greenery, reeds and grass behind it as, it's a jungle in here. The image of the game is described as being actual size, so while you can't see it, you get a good idea of its scale. The back, meanwhile, offers a look at the game when it's opened up, and a breakdown of its specifications along the side, which you can pause the video to read. So that does it for the box. Let's open it up and take a look at the replica itself. Okay, so here we have the Jumanji board game replica, and on first glance it looks excellent and everything that I wanted since I was a little boy. The design on the front seems to have been replicated well, although it looks a bit soft in places, and almost like some sections are made out of icing as though it's some kind of Jumanji themed birthday cake. Having said that, I do appreciate that these are all raised and multi-layered sections, with the thick leaves and blades of grass at the bottom overlapping, the letters of the name all raised out from the arrow beneath them, the tall trees above the name, and these volcanic mountains with the smoke emanating from the peak of one, all being separate raised pieces. The zigzag border is also a fully raised piece, and I do appreciate that the entire board looks hand-painted, which you can particularly note around these brown edges. The four oval panels at the corners look excellent for the most part. The rhino looks quite soft around its edges. The elephant looks great, yet has similar issues, as does the monkey in the top corner. All three so far have been decent enough representations of the graphics seen on the actual board. But then we get to Van Pelt. Oh dear, this is a real mess. The detail is all over the place. While the safari hat looks great, the face is a twisted nightmare. It looks like he's completely shaven on one side of his jaw, while the other side looks to be covered in a long blonde beard. And for all the praise I gave it for being hand-painted, beyond this front graphic, the rest of it is made of plastic, which contains these odd speckles of lighter paint through it, a far cry from the dark painted wood of the actual prop, and there is no weathering on any of it. In fact, you can really notice some serious lapses in attention to detail on the sides, as while the grooves have been moulded into the sides of the opening panels, that circular design isn't present beneath them. Also, while the hinges seem to be the right shape, they're missing the circular tube sections that protrude from each end. Finally, the underside offers these four small legs at each side, which the original prop did have, but weren't this prominent, while the entire look of the replica has been completely destroyed by this big felt circular sticker containing all the legal flashunjim it is extremely satisfying to open the game up. The hinges offer a very fluid motion while being quite strong. I also appreciate that these diamond pegs have been cleverly integrated into the board, which slot into these holes on the edges of the panels to lock them into place and give it a bit of support when closed. The inner game board looks excellent, in fact all of it does, but much like the front, it's great until you look closer. The actual board is very reminiscent of the prop, with the four white tracks designed as carved in separate pieces which stick out from the body of the board with each space separated by black grooves at either side and the same is true for the jungle leaves which make up the design of the back of the board. In the centre we get the eye of Jumanji, at least I think that's what it's called, which is green with gold detailing around the edges and the Jumanji logo is visible inside it. It's not 100% accurate, but the biggest gripe is that this piece easily falls off. It's designed to be this way on purpose, as it's one of the features of the included board game. But would it have killed them to include some clips, pegs or magnets to hold it in place a bit better? Removing it, you can see the Jumanji logo much more clearly, which is printed in gold on a green felt circular section. But now, we come to the biggest issue with this replica. While each of the sides look great, featuring the Jumanji write-up and the Adventures Beware warning, there is one massive issue. 
They have been inserted into the game the wrong way round. That's right, the Jumanji side should begin underneath this side pod, while Adventures Beware should begin under the pod at the far side. It's amazing that they got this wrong, and inserted these panels the wrong way around without double checking reference photos, or even the movie itself. It's such a shame too, as otherwise these look really great. The text is a little bit messy, but acceptable, the colour is correct, and they even gave the panels some nice weathering across their surfaces. In the top corner of one side and in the bottom corner of the other we get the hinge sections which cover the pods that house the dice and the game pieces. These look brilliant with the raised leaves design moulded into them but once again these aren't fully screen accurate. They're also a bit of a nightmare to open with the tab at the base of the panel having a slot at its edge that you have to awkwardly slide your fingernail into and pull open. That's tricky enough as it is without the magnet that holds it shut being so goddamn strong making it very difficult and quite uncomfortable as though you're going to rip your fingernail off. The dice are housed in one section. These look atrocious and nothing like the screen used dice. They're way too small and modern, being included as part of the playable game feature, which we'll talk about a little later on, and not for screen accurate authenticity. It's a real shame too, as the 3D printed dice I picked up from the movie Prop Shop really complement this replica as a display piece over whatever the hell Monopoly set these fell out of. Next up are the game pieces, and once again, I think the 3D printed pieces I picked up a few years back look way better than these. I mean, sure, they look way neater with higher levels of detail than the 3D printed ones, but they just look so cheap, glossy and plastic. They really could have done with a light paint wash to weather them down and make them look way more accurate. And surely, surely for all its faults. The Jumanji board game is bound to have the magnetic feature for the pieces, right? I mean, I can't wait to drop one onto the board and see it shoot across to one of the starting positions. Oh god. Are you winding me up at this point? No, really though. I paid £140 for this and they didn't even include some magnets in the bases of the figures? Why? That's one of the most iconic features of the game, and it's not even been included here! What the hell is going on? The board game prop also doubles as an actual board game in its own right for up to four players. I haven't had the chance to play it properly due to the current lockdown and also recovering from some serious mental issues, but various extra pieces such as the third die, tokens and life points accompany the set and can be stored alongside the game pieces and dice. I do like how the clue tokens are circular shaped and can be placed under the Jumanji Eye Dome. As an extra boost, I really like the design on the back of these tokens, which makes it look as it does at the end of the movie when a player has one called out the game's name. I would try to explain how it works, but to be fair, it comes off as a less exciting and unnecessarily complicated version of Ludo. And doing a quick size comparison, here we have the Jumanji board next to some 6 inch and 12 inch figures to give you a rough idea of its scale. So, overall, what do I think of this replica? Well, I'm quite torn by it. Everything here seems excellent, yet half-assed at the same time. The detail and design of the front is brilliant, if a little soft in places, while the rest of the body is very plain and inaccurate. The inside suffers from similar issues, while the instructions on each side being on the wrong way round is unforgivable, and makes me feel like this was rushed through production, with very few quality control checks. The pieces look alright, but could have used some weathering, while the dice are just not accurate at all. And would it have killed them to make the game pieces magnetic? Or for that matter, make the eye of the board electronic or at the least light up? Maybe include an app for smartphones and a way to slot your phone into the game so the screen appears inside the eye? Just something, as the included gameplay can seem quite frustrating and awkward with having to swap out those clue tokens all the time. In the end, it's far from perfect, and it won't appease die-hard Jumanji fans, but it's ultimately a fun and affordable replica with the bonus of being an actual but slightly dull playable board game. We're left with something that isn't quite a toy, not quite a replica, and not a full-on board game either. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. And why not be extra awesome like all of these people and support us on Patreon. Links are in the description. Until next time, farewell.